Happy Memorial Day weekend, everyone. It's the unofficial start of summer, so get those barbecues out, get those bikini bodies ready, and let's get the party started. Yeah, if you say any of those things, stop. For those of you who follow my channel regularly, you probably know that I'm a veteran. Wait, before you write that comment, hopefully you read the title of this video so you know what I'm about to say next. Don't thank veterans on Memorial Day. Roll credits. We have a day for that, appropriately named Veterans Day. Known around the world as Armistice Day, Remembrance Day, or Annual Call of Duty Release Day. It marks the end of World War I, which occurred at 11 a.m. on 11-11-1918. In America, we also used to call it Armistice Day until 1954, when Eisenhower officially renamed it to Veterans Day. Just as a side note, the official spelling of Veterans Day is like this. Not like this, or like this. There's no apostrophe. Because it's not a day that belongs to veterans or any specific veteran, it's a day to honor veterans in general. So it's the day that you're supposed to thank veterans for their service. Which, just as a side note, I've never felt comfortable with any response to that. Like, you're welcome? It's taken me years to finally land on, well, thanks for your support, but even then I'm not entirely sure that's the right answer. And since I'm friends with other veterans, I know I'm not alone in that discomfort. That doesn't mean you should stop though, we might be in the minority, I don't know. But that's the day that you're supposed to do it, which doesn't really stop people from doing it any other day, which is fine, but there's one day a year that you're not supposed to do it. Memorial Day. Because Memorial Day is set aside to remember the fallen. Not those fallen. Really? The bad guy from Transformers 2? Who even remembers that? Sorry, you're not really being specific. Come on, man. No, you come on, man! There you go. Yeah, Memorial Day is specifically set aside to remember those who have died in service to our country. So saying thanks to a living veteran is... weird. Like, thanks, but... I'm still alive? It's not really disrespectful per se, but it just shows that you have no idea what this day is for. This day is appropriately named Memorial Day because you're supposed to go to a cemetery or a monument or a memorial in order to pay tribute to those who gave their lives for, well depending on the war, for something different. Your independence, your freedom, your security, any number of things. But that's the key. You're supposed to go somewhere and do something. Posting your thanks on Facebook isn't enough. This goes for almost any holiday, whether it's Memorial Day, Veterans Day, or depending on your religion, Christmas or Easter. Go somewhere and do something. But if this is the type of monument you decide to visit on Memorial Day, you're an asshole. Really? Sorry, you just kind of took me by surprise. You don't really swear that often. Don't you edit these afterwards? Yeah. Then how did you miss it? Well, how did you hear it? Anyway, this topic seems to come up every once in a while, especially recently because of the removal of Confederate statues. You may have seen this meme pop up in your Facebook feed. There's been several versions of it over the years, so let's address it. Firstly, no, okay? Confederate veterans are not US veterans. In fact, they were pretty much the exact opposite of US veterans. They were separatist rebels who fought against US soldiers. Some might even go so far as to call them traitors. Some people think that the removal of Confederate statues is similar to Germany removing Nazi statues. We're never going to erase the Civil War from our history books, but perhaps it's best not to celebrate and have monuments to this racist, separatist movement from our history. Let's get one thing straight. Saying that they fought for states rights is a rose-colored perversion of history. Make no mistake, they fought for one state right, the right to keep slaves. The Civil War was not the war to end slavery for the North, but it was the war to keep slavery for the South. You know what, I should probably just make a video specifically on this. I wonder if it has anything to do with why Oklahoma has a panhandle. Anyway, the laws and acts of Congress in question do not explicitly declare Confederate veterans to be equal to US veterans. But it did do two things that symbolically kind of do that. First, it makes pensions available to the widows of veterans of the Spanish-American War, the Civil War, the Indian War, and the Mexican War. And further, it states that for the purpose of this section, the term veteran includes a person who served in the military or naval forces of the Confederate States of America during the Civil War. 
So does saying that the widows of Confederate soldiers are eligible for pensions mean that Confederate veterans are equal to US veterans? The second law they mention, they actually get this one incredibly wrong. The 17th Congress was in 1823, nothing happened in 1929, and there's no such thing as Public Law 810. What they mean is 85-811, which was passed in 1958. So I don't really know how they got this wrong or why they would lie about it, but perhaps it's because making it older makes it seem more legitimate. But 85-811 actually does kind of say what they're trying to convey. It makes Confederate veterans eligible for the same burial benefits as Union and US veterans, and retroactively makes any Confederate cemetery part of the Veterans Administration. So while neither of these two laws actually say that Confederate veterans are equal to Union veterans or are US veterans, when it comes to pension and burial benefits, they are. So the rest of it is kind of up to your interpretation. Also, just for the record, the last two surviving Confederate veterans died in 1959. None of them died in 1958. If you're going to state something for the record, at least make sure it's right. So why am I making a distinction between US and Confederate monuments and memorials? Because they do. At first, Memorial Day was a Union holiday. It was started in 1868 by the Grand Army of the Republic, which is like the VFW but for Union veterans of the Civil War, and it was called Decoration Day. And it was a day specifically set aside to decorate the graves of Union soldiers. It later became the national holiday known as Memorial Day, and it's recognized on the last Monday of May. Confederate Memorial Day was started on April 25th, 1866, two years earlier. And it's the exact same thing as Decoration Day, but for Confederate veterans. It's still celebrated as a state holiday in the South, but on different days depending on what state. In one state, it's actually known as Confederate Heroes Day. Can you guess which state? It's Texas, because of course it's Texas. So why separate US veterans from Confederate veterans? Because they did, and still do. So the next time you decide to post your annual thoughts and prayers to those who served on Facebook and Twitter, don't. Actually go somewhere and do something. And the next time you want to thank a living veteran for their service on Memorial Day, hopefully now, you'll know better. Hey, just really quick, I wanted to let you know that tonight at 7 p.m. Pacific time, I'll be participating in a live stream with Mr. Beat and reading through history about the recent removal of Confederate statues. I'll put out a link to that on my Twitter since it won't be hosted on this channel. So make sure to follow me on Twitter and be on the lookout for that. But if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, make sure to give that like button a click. If you'd like to see more from me, I put out new videos every Sunday, so make sure to memorialize that subscribe button. But in the meantime, if you'd like to watch one of my older videos, how about this one?